just it's rampant on television it's it's hitting all spheres of influence and and uh, uh, we have not understood what we're really fighting against um, and the enemy is is very uh, technical and strategic in his attack to deceive the entire world come on say amen to that and and deception is nothing to play with because once you are deceived you cannot see and you cannot hear the truth when it's spoken. Come on, say amen to amen. that. Uh, and one of the things that we want to do is break the power of deception over the world and over God's people. Turn to the book of uh, Revelations, and I want to start there at uh, 12, 9. And, uh, and then we're going to, uh, God has kind of given us through, through the preach word and through revelation that he's giving us actual strategy. It's not just a word, but God has given us strategy. We need to have something to target to pray about. Are you listening to yes. me? That, that a lot of times people are just preaching sermons, but it's not about preaching sermons. A lot of times God is exposing the enemy unto us and giving us a target. Target, and once we hit the target, we break and then we get the spoils. And, and a lot of times, the spoils is not always finance, it's, it's souls. Harvest can be souls. Come on, say amen yes. to that. And that, that we don't have laborers, those that, that, that will labor on the streets in evangelism, but we need laborers that will labor in the spirit realm and cry out. And the name of this conference is the cry for the city. And you know, when, when, when we become detached from feeling what people are feeling, Jesus came down. He came down from his throne of royalty and power to feel what humans would be feeling. He's in touch with our infirmities. He knows what we're going through. And we have forgotten what the world is actually going through in the church. And God is bringing us all the way back around to begin to move or be moved by compassion. Are you listening to me? Yes. That we'll know that there is pain and there is suffering out there and people are hurting and people are dying and people are going to hell and people are sick and full of disease and people are bound and addicted. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. And that is pain and that is suffering and that is bondage and that is slavery. And now God is coming to free his people. Yes. Freedom. It's coming to all freedom to the church, uh, freedom to Christians, freedom to the to the dope addict, freedom to the dope dealer, freedom everywhere. God is bringing freedom to those that are bound. Amen. Now, now watch this. The, the word deceive means to cause someone to believe something that is not true. Are y'all here? That means if Satan is using deception in the world, he's causing you to believe something that is not true. He's doing everything that he possibly can to get you to believe a lie. Remember that his name is the father of lies. We have to understand that everything that, that, that he is in control of is basically a lie. Are you listening to me? Yeah. And, and we've gotten so far away from the truth that now because most so many people are deceived, we believe the truth. We believe a lie is the truth. Mm -mm. Come on, say amen. Oh now God is changing us. Now we're coming into soberness. And one of the main things that we need uh, as Christians and those of you that, that are coming to God and hearing about God is to discern what is right from wrong. Are you listening to me? And what is a lie from the truth? And a lie is you do not have to live like you're living. You don't have to live like an animal. You don't have to live in cage. You don't have to live addicted. You don't have to live sick and bound with disease. Come on, say amen. The truth is God can set you free. Yes. 12.9. Let's read that again. And the great dragon was cast out, the old, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. 
He deceiveth the whole world. And now we're starting to see that, that, that God is targeting a particular power that is released by satanic powers or by Satan that will free God's people. And we don't have enough people that have a heart to cry out for them that are hurting and bound and deceived. And, and, and see that the power is, is is not so much just God, uh, somebody giving a preach word. There is no cry for the city. Oh my God. I, are you listening to me? That that even uh, a night like tonight, people will come and say, I want to hear the preacher. I want to hear the man of God just preach a word. And sometimes God is not interested in a preaching style or somebody preaching a, a particular word or uh, getting you excited. But God is, is calling people together to cry out for the cities. Yes. Are you listening to me? That yes. that now we have shifted from just being a, a, an entertainment religious group or an entertainment preaching group that God now is crying out for cities and God is crying out for uh, different states and crying out for the United States and crying out for leadership. And there's not enough compassion on the inside of us for us to break our services and cry out for those that are hurting and in pain. Are you here? I can remember the times when, when I was in pain and bondage. I was looking for a way out and didn't even know I had a way out. And somebody that understood pain would cry out for me and they wouldn't stop uh, day or night until they saw me free from bondage. Oh my God. Are you listening to me? And we have become lazy. We, we're not laborers. We can't get a laborer. We got to get somebody. Come on. Bless me. Bless me. Bless me. Bless me in the church. And some of us been in the church and been blessed and prophesied to and been uh, 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 hands laid on and under glory. And we still want more. But now it's time for us to lay our lives down for them that are hurting and them that are in bondage and them that are enslaved and addicted. Come on say amen to that and cry out for the freedom of a city yes amen. come on say amen to that amen. And, and when you get this kind of preaching that means people have to do something that means the Christians have to do something it's not just come on give it to me give it to me we are crying out for those that are hurting we are crying out for men and women of God that we know that some people will never be saved until somebody prays for them Yes. Are you listening to me? I was talking uh, uh, with the woman of God uh, briefly earlier, and I was saying how important it is to have, uh, uh, when you're dealing with coming to um, rescue and break the power over a city or break the power over a territory or neighborhood, which uh, there's so much bondage and there's so much uh, uh, addiction and crime and murder and rape and molestation, and we're turning a deaf ear and playing church inside and and, and, and and then now we gotta have people on the streets, we have to have ground troops, we gotta have people out there on the streets and witnessing and praying for people and doing miracle signs and wonders and we have to have people dealing with the powers of the air so we have intercessors and prayer warriors and evangelists working together to change a entire city come on say amen, amen. and braiding yes. to shall be changed yes Amen. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. that. That we don't lose sight of what God is actually trying to do. God is trying to change a city. This, this is not just about uh, her church or this church or that church over there. God somehow has concentrated his attention to Bradington. And, and, and where sin abounds, grace is abounding. That means the ability of God is coming upon men and women of God who will step out and have a heart to save the lost. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We have to give of ourselves now to see people saved. My God, yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. And one of the things that the devil is doing is deceiving the church. Making you think that the church is just uh, a place that you go and jump and shout and, 
and have a good time and try to uh, build your own little flattering crew. But that's not what God is saying these days that now we care. I think it's getting so close to the end that that God is reaching out to, to as many souls as possible. I heard a prophet on uh, New Year's Eve and he says there would be a, a mass um release of an evangelistic spirit upon the United States. I, I, I feel it already. It's like like evangelism is going to hit uh, churches all over the place. That that we'll come out of the building. That we'll be uh, all in Walmart and all in, in the, the worst neighborhoods in New York. The worst neighborhoods in Chicago and, and all in, in every major city uh, in the United States and reaching out and snatching souls out of hell. Yes, Lord. Come on, say amen to yes, that. Lord. And, and one of the things that, that's been um, a, a tragedy in the church is how many souls one Christian wins to Christ within a year. Hmm. And uh, they said this statistic is usually one or no souls. The average Christian does not win one or in even uh, may, maybe one or no souls to Christ in an entire year. My God. That's where the evangelistic anointing has went. Because nobody wants to go out there. Nobody wants to, to preach in places like this. Nobody wants to, to, to labor with, with people and, and be where the hurting are. They, 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 we want to be in fine uh, uh, buildings and, and cushioned seats while other people are dying. Come on, say amen to that. But I want God to put an evangelistic anointing on me. I remember getting, uh, uh, when I got saved, I, would, I was uh, in Chicago and I would be all, all up in the jails and uh, uh, the homeless shelters. And, and we would be preaching on the street and we would go to the worst neighborhoods and, and they got a community in, in Chicago where uh, it's just uh, uh, perversion, homosexuals and all that kind of stuff and we would be on the bullhorns preaching and they would be throwing stuff out the window and all kinds of things like that and we'd be standing bold and strong preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ come on say amen to that and, and just, just raw men and women of God that want to see people say healed and delivered. Come on, say amen. amen. That you don't have to live in bondage. There's power to free you from every power of the enemy. Amen. Come on, say amen. And now one of the things that we understood about the spirit of Satan is he is a deceiver. So he works with blindness. That means he blinds people from the truth. You cannot see. He, he will cause you not to see Jesus. He'll cause you not to see the truth of the power of God. The power of God is more powerful than any power of Satan. Come on, say amen to that. And people need to hear that there's no diabolical scheme. There's no horror. There's no demon. There's no devil that is stronger than God and his mighty angels angels. Amen. There's, there's no drug, there's no addiction that is stronger than the mighty hand of God. Amen. Are you listening to me? God can break any addiction in one word, or one hand, or one, one, one anointing can break it forever. Yes. Come on, say amen. That people need to know that God's power is more powerful than anything in this world. Anything this world can offer. Any bondage that the Satan or his demons can lock a person up with. That God's power is more powerful. So he moves in blindness, which is ignorance. Sometimes in darkness, walking in darkness is being able not to see. And the truth is the light. It's Jesus is the light of the world and the truth is the light. So once you begin to see the truth, you don't walk in darkness no more. You're not blind. You can see Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. Jesus is not a religion. Jesus is power. Jesus is love. Jesus is freedom. Jesus is your destiny. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. Turn to uh, Genesis 1, 26. And this is uh, uh, powerful that, that I believe that even now that we have to be strategic in our preaching. 
Say, straight, say strategic in our preaching. Strategic in our preaching. We have to be very strategic in our preaching at this point in life. Very strategic. I need a charger. Because uh, I, I can't just preach a sermon now because God is on a mission. And some of you uh, that are here uh, uh, are under the sound of my voice. I know you have a very strategic call on your life. And I know that God is calling some of you. And God is going to use many of you very powerfully this year. And God said, let us make, verse 26, 126. And God said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. Now, how many of you all have ever just heard that? That, that God made creation to be very, they were, they were, Adam and Eve were, were like small gods. They were, they were powerful created men and women. And God, when Jesus came back, he brought us back to that state of revelation or that the spirit, Satan blinded them saying, uh, uh, don't you know? Don't you want to know things like God? They already had all knowing. They just got deceived by a word. And sometimes you can get deceived by a half truth. That means there's a little bit of truth in it, but it's really a lie. Come on, say amen to that. That's how he deceived them. But watch this. And and after after our likeness, and let them have. Say, let them have. Let them have dominion in, in everything that, that God is doing now. And when we start to talk about the kingdom of God, in, and I'll go to this in, uh, in Matthew, that kingdom will rise against kingdom in the last days. And But the, everything that is connected to kingdom is dominion. Say dominion. Dominion. And, and saints now, or the Christians... Is taking dominion over everything that is not like God. When God made us, he made us to have a dominion mindset. Are you listening to me? Yes. In other words, the domain of uh, 14th Street, because we see the pain, the poverty, the, the murder, the, the, the crime, and all the things that are happening. Now we take dominion over this territory mm -hmm. to bring forth God's glory and power and to free people from this bondage and this lie of the enemy. Are y'all listening to me? We take our, our authority and dominion over the lives of these people that Satan will not take them to hell. Not on our watch. Amen. God gave us dominion. So we're taking dominion over every power of the enemy. Are you listening to me? When we started to talk the other day and we were saying that, that now we are breaking every power of bondage and every power of blindness over every person in this region and every person in this territory. When we start to walk in divine authority in the kingdom of almighty God and we begin to take dominion, we command their, uh, the scales to fall off of their eyes that men will not be blinded anymore to be Bound to be bound and hurting. You know, it's it's a shame to be bound on earth My God. and then go to a hell. Jesus. Are you listening to me? Yes. And, and it's it's almost like Satan is making it almost like hell on earth. He taking people so far down. It's like they'll do just about anything to destroy mankind. Mm-hmm. And God is saying, live. I want you to live again. I want you to dream again. I want you to be free from bondage. I don't want you to have to uh, spend every dime you have on, on uh, a rock or uh, something to put up your nose or shoot up your arm. God is not calling you to, 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 to die a death like that. My God. Are you listening to me? And that, that now uh, uh, we're starting to see that, that Jesus upon the earth was moved with compassion. Yes, he was. So we have to be moved with compassion. We can't, we can't be a church anymore that's, that's not in touch with what's going on out here. 
Are you listening to me? That's why we're we are uh, we're continually quiet. We don't want to talk about Jesus because we really don't know how much pain people are in. Mm. But God sometimes makes many of us aware. He'll put somebody around you and you'll see the pain and you'll see the suffering and you'll see the, the bondage and you'll see the addiction and you'll see the sickness and you'll see the rejection and the hurt. Are y'all listening to me? Yes. And now it'll, if there's an anointing that will come upon you to minister to God's people, to minister to the lost, to minister to the hurting. Are you here? Yes. And we got to kind of shake off our religion and start moving and mobilizing this army for God to move and get his glory. We cannot forget about soul. Amen. Amen. And, and you know, many of us, and I know many of you, I haven't seen some of you in a long time, and many of us has been ministered to, and we have strong calls and strong ministries, but uh, uh, we can't forget about souls. We can't just go in and prophesy to each other and jump around in the church because our calling is to save the world. Yes. Some of us are called to nations. I was able to. To, to go to different places like Africa and different parts of, and the poverty was so uh, detrimental. I, it was unbelievable what I was able to see and, and how um, uh, the parents make children and they, they gulch their eyes out so that they can look um, even more and, and beg in the marketplace for money. It's just, it's uh, no hardly any food and things like that. And, uh, and we minister and, and heal and miracles take place. And God is getting ready to do some miracles uh, on 14th Street. I believe there's some, some miracle uh, that in signs and wonders that's getting ready to take place. I feel like there's some people that God is going to touch in this area that's going to be a sign and a wonder to many. I, I, I just hear in the spirit, even as a prophet, that people say, ain't no way that person got saved. It's kind of like uh, when Paul got, got, got saved. and uh, 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 It's like when a man gets saved that was murdering Christians. All of a sudden, they say, no way. They can't even believe it. I believe it's going to be a miracle salvation to somebody on this. Matter of fact, would y'all lift y'all hands and we pray for that right now. We pray for God to save one of the most low down dirty criminals in this territory. Reach down and touch them right now. Break every bondage. Break every power, Lord, and save by your spirit, God. Bring them into the kingdom of the Most High God in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name Amen. Of Turn to uh, Matthew 24, uh, 37. And I just want to get us, I just want to keep us kind of stirred up because a lot of times faith comes by hearing and we got to hear uh, some type of preaching uh, to, to kind of get your faith stirred up mm -hmm. and to kind of change the way you, you see church. Now I've been able to do, what did I say, Matthew 24? 24. 24, 37. I've been able to do uh, some uh, gift, uh, spiritual gift conferences and and all over, all over the world, and all over uh, the United States, and God is equipping His people um, with the gifts that Satan fought so many years. He fought so many years to keep the gifts of the Spirit out of the church when the gift of the Spirit was just supposed to be in you. He fought it out of the church. But now the gifts of the Spirit are powerful for ministry. You can't minister really effectively to anyone without the gifts of the Spirit. Now watch this. 24, let's go to 24-7 first. For nation, say for nation, shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And this is what we're, this is what's happening right now with this type of preaching. It's not, it's a different type of preaching and, and, and some of us that have to stand bold now and start to preach kingdom. But preaching kingdom, it's just not only the principles of the kingdom, it's that the king that we now are rising in power mm -hmm. to confront the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. 
Are you here? That 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 what I'm saying is that now that the kingdom of God is more powerful than that kingdom. That the kingdom of God will make that kingdom bow to the name of Jesus. Are you listening to me? Yes. That the angels of God's kingdom are greater than the demons of satanic kingdoms. Are y'all listening to me? And, and see, this thing is starting to change people's mindset. And that we become a little bit more bolder. That, 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 that the devil does not have power over our cities. And the devil does not have power over our neighborhoods to run rampant. And we're so, because in our mouths is the power of the kingdom. And I used to tell people that sometimes when you stand up for a cause that God, that's God's heart, that all heaven will stand with you. That when you open your mouth that angels, legions of angels will execute God's will just because it came out of your mouth. We will not let people die and, and just go to hell and be in bondage in Bradenton when God's eye is on this place. We speak that they shall not die but live. Somebody has to stand up for them. Somebody has to be a voice for them that cannot speak for themselves. They are in bondage here. Shut their mouths. Amen. We say that a, another woman would not die of age that, that is prostituting herself on 14th Street. She will not die of age. She will not die of an STD or a disease. Somebody has to stand up and call out for them. Yes, yes. Are you here? And, and this, see, see we're we playing so many games. It's like we, we're so selfish now. Everything me, me, me. But Jesus laid his life down for us. For other people, we got to lay our lives down in prayer. We got to lay our lives down in intercession. We got to lay our lives down in evangelism. Go out, save them. Go out, go out, speak the truth. Go out, break the power of the enemy. Go out, pray. Heal the sick, deliver. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. amen. Now watch this. What was I saying? For nation, kingdom shall rise against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and diverse places. Now, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that there's earthquakes, all kinds of things happening all over the world. So we are, we are right now in this scripture as I'm reading it. And, and it says, all these are the beginnings of sorrows. That means we ain't really seen nothing yet. So, so it's like God is giving us to be more powerful as it gets worse. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's how we stand out. We become more, more anointed, more powerful, more full of love. That's how we can recognize one another. As it gets, as it gets worse, we become more loving. As, as, as the world begins to hate each other and begins to be murderers, we begin to love one another more. Mm -hmm. As, 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 as uh, things begin to happen on the earth, our anointings get stronger. Mm -hmm. Are y'all listening to me? That, that now that, that people don't have to go to the hospital to get healed from cancer, that, that the saints now are walking around with healing gifts that can heal cancer. Yes. Come on, y'all. I, I, I know people looking at me funny, but, but, but God now is raising up a remnant, and people are gifted. And the enemy did not want us to know that some of us had healing gifts. Mm -hmm. That means, that means, or miracle gifts. That's in the Bible, a nine gift. That, that means your gift is so powerful that you don't even have to do a whole lot. It's a gift. That, that you can, God is not just giving a gift to like, oh, Smith Wigglesworth in this generation, maybe Benny Hinn here, maybe Catherine Kuhlman, because he had, the, by doctrine, Satan had fought the gift so much that people didn't know that the average Christian was anointed with one or more of the giftings. Hmm. Are y'all listening to me? In, in other words, your child can have the gift of miracles. Amen. Yes. See, see, now we're starting to recognize the gifts inside of people. Everything that Satan tried to stop, 
Now we're pulling forth. Now we're identifying. Are y'all listening to me? And, and some of us have more than one gifts. And, and these power gifts were never just supposed to be, uh, uh, I guess, showboated in the church. They were for such a time as this that now that God is reaching out to save the world and that a lot of people is not church. They've never been church. It's like we, some of us came from this, this generation that was church. We called, we were church. We came up in the church. We came up uh, going to Sunday school and our parents taking us to church. And me and my brothers didn't want to go to church. But my mother was one of them that said, as long as you under this roof, and you know, once you move out, you don't have to go to church. But if you live in here, you got to go to church. So we, we were church to some degree. But now the generation that we are called to minister to are unchurched. So we have to bring the power of the true church to them. Yes. Are y'all listening to me? Mm -hmm. I'm going somewhere. I'm almost finished. And they shall, and they shall, and, and it says uh, earthquakes, and that's the beginning of sorrows, and they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and shall you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. We already see this. We see some of the, the Muslim nations that hate America, not because of just America. And I know Obama and some of these other people have done some stupid stuff, but we are not hated. Because of political systems, we are hated because of Christ. Amen. Come on, say amen. And, and watch, and, and some of us that, that God had to teach us a little bit, and let me say this, that, that God had to uh, teach us how to be hated and keep on doing what God has called you to do. You know, a lot of people ain't going to like when you start really preaching the truth and really want to save people and really want to deliver people and really want to see people set free. You're going to have some haters. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. And God got to train you that that you going to be hated. In the last days, people ain't going to like when you're trying to do something good for somebody. When we're going to have a time where we're going to pray and cry out for people. I'm talking about for hours and, and weep for the nation. Come on, say amen to that, that the devil ain't going to like it and a lot of people not going to say it, but we're going to make sure that we cry out for those lost souls. Yes. And they, and many shall be offended and betray one another. We know that's happening in the church. And shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Now, didn't, didn't I just talk about uh, yesterday that deception has even gotten the church because false prophets that 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 are preaching uh, half truths, but they really are lies. They they are meant to deceive us. That it's it's like uh, that that even though it sounds good and even if um, it can get people excited, does not mean it's God's truth. That God is not just trying to have bless me crews and everything is bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. Bless me. Some things is get off of your derriere and do what God has called you to do. Mm -hmm. amen. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. And, and, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because of iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And many of us what we need now going into this new year is endurance, learning how to endure, learning how, uh, like they used to say about uh, Timex, can take a licking and keep on ticking. Come on. Some of us got to um, revisit some of your prophecies. Hmm. Come on, you know what God said. I, I know that a lot of people are not doing what, what God has called them to do. And some people have lost their fire. But I'm here to tell you, I believe this year that, that many of us, many Christians will get their fire back. I'm talking about a burning fire for ministry again to see people set free. Not this, uh, 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 hey, um, I, I want to be on TV. I want to be on TBN and all of that kind of stuff. Just, just a burning fire to minister to people. 
a burning desire to change people's lives, a burning desire to see people healed again. You know, uh, it's, it's very interesting when, you know, you, you're healthy and, and thank God I'm healthy and God has kept me healthy and I believe God a lot of times for healing. But anytime something goes wrong in your body, it doesn't feel good. And when you see God bring you out of it, then you know how powerful it is to, to, to have someone heal you from sickness mm -hmm. and, and God can heal you those of you that are sick in here will pray for you tonight and believe God God still heals the sick God still uh, uh, breaks bondages and casts out devils turn to uh, 24 where we at 24 7 let's go to 24 37 Hallelujah. Twenty four thirty seven. But as it was, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man, Son of Man be. For as the days that there were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Nord into the ark. Uh, and it's the same thing. It's like the last days, the same things are going to happen. It's like people are going to be.